What is going on? Charles Botenston here. I actually just turned off the uh, AC here in my apartment, and uh, I think I'm going to be doing some more podcasts. I love how I just went through what I was actually going to talk about. So the first thing was, I may be sweating, but this is what I'm doing for you guys. I'm making some sacrifices over here. Work with me, people. <laughs> All right, so today, what are we going to be talking about? First of all, I actually really like podcasts. Number one is because I could talk a lot better. Number two is I don't have to, like, entertain you visually. You could just listen to me while you do your dishes or vacuum your apartment or whatever else you do or you're at work and you don't care about your boss. So today we're going to be talking about why I don't care about my social media engagement. I kind of already talked about this a little bit, but it's going to be, there's going to be a lot of things that I bring up here. So I talked about this at my meeting with my agents. You guys already know that I own a real estate company here in New York City. And one of the biggest things is that, and I see it obviously with the younger generation because the younger generation, I'm only 32, but the younger generation, in other words, you grew up with social media. I didn't grow up with social media. So for me, it wasn't that big of a deal when it came around. It was like, okay, cool, we're going to join this. But for you guys, it was a massive thing. It was like those were the people you looked up to. You looked up to influencers. You looked up to, say, Viners or now Instagrammers or YouTubers or whatever. We didn't have that. We always looked up to athletes and movie stars. Actually, that, that brings up an awesome topic, which is they – and by they, I mean Hollywood – football, hockey, because everyone's talking about, you know, football, the amount of attendance is going down and not only the amount of attendance attendance is going down, but the actual amount of people watching the games is going down. And I was thinking about it. I'm like, why is how, like, how is that possible? There's it, it's it's really popular. It is the number one sport, not not only the number one sport, but we have more people <laughs> like with more people. There should be more viewerships to the number one sport here in America. But in fact, there's so much more content that you could be listening to. You could do podcast, music, video. Soon there's going to be AR, VR. There's just so many experiences that you could be going through. Like, think about it. Like, 100 years ago, the only thing they really had was a car. They didn't even have media. And then the radio came. And then the TV came. But with each addition then there was the movies so then you only had like three venues you only had like three people or three medians to look up to people now you have like this massive array of content and just a ton of people to either connect with that is just into your weird niche or the second thing is you should like you're never bored which goes right into what i was going to be talking about is So I'll post something on Instagram. So for me, you know, I don't know what your engagement is. My engagement is terrible. And, you know, for probably about six, seven months, I've been thinking about it. Like, why is my engagement so bad? Like, nobody really likes my photos. And I'm not thinking about it like, oh, I'm depressed. I'm thinking about it like, what what am I doing right or wrong on other posts? Like, what what is it? And it's a it's it's a really okay so there's there's a very fine line and and the fine line really is really comes down to if i change too much then i'm inauthentic however and that's like pandering to your audience however if i just post shit that is just not interesting that's a totally different thing so i started thinking about i'm like i'm just i'm I'm probably just not posting interesting stuff (laughs) i'm like I have a a thousand people following me and I get like a one to 2% uh, like ratio. In other words, like 10 or 20 likes on each photo. And there's this girl that I work with and I'll, I'll get into the whole point of this, but there's a girl that I work with. She has like 1700 followers, but her click through, she might even have less her click through or her like ratio is like 600. Every photo she posts about 40% of the people like it. That is insane. That is like, that's amazing. I like, I, I, I like look at her more, not like, Oh, I'm so impressed. I want to be friends with you. But like, that is like a loyal following. That is awesome. And I started thinking about it and 
you know what I, I, I you know, because I and I've talked about this in the past where people are deleting photos and whatever. But I started thinking about it even further. And I said, if I can't take someone and I'll give you these three examples. So I have a, another vlog channel or I have another channel on YouTube that I uploaded. I thought I was going to do, you know, video vlogging or video blogging with a video and a video blogging with a video. OK, nice, nice conversation, Charles. Um <laughs> I was thinking of doing daily vlogs and I'm going to be doing that in the future. So if you know anyone that's going to be potentially looking to either film and or intern, those are two positions that we have open. Um, the biggest thing for us is, or the biggest thing for me about two years ago when I started daily vlogging is it's a lot of work. So I was like, you know what? I don't want to do this. I don't have the time to do this and I'm not going to go full time like Casey, Casey Neistat. So I'm just going to stop. So I stopped, but I did it on like a couple of trips and whatever. So I went on that channel. I logged in for the first time in probably a year. And there was three comments on this, vi this, this uh, vlog when I was in Sevilla, which I think is in, yeah, it's in Spain. And it was an amazing trip. Obviously the video was from two years ago. So it was the first time I ever vlogged. And there were three comments like calling me a cunt and a prick and an ass hat and things like that. And they were pretty good comments, like pretty good, like hateful comments. <laughs> the like typical American, you fucking asshat. And I'm like, wow, okay. So this is what it's like. And those, by the way, were the only three comments. All three from three different people, really good, hateful comments. I went through, I was like, that is, am and that was the only comments on my entire channel on all of my vlog videos. Granted, it's only like 20 of them, but it was, it was kind of funny. So I started going back and I started thinking about it a little bit more in the, in the meeting that I had with my agents. I said, listen, if you can't take a, cause there's this girl that is, that works with us and she's 25. She just turned 25. So, you know, she grew up with social media. She's always on social media. She loves social media. Um, and she's like trying to protect this image and she's trying to protect this image of just, I, uh, I would say just an awesome life. And that's cool. However, she posts like once a week or once every two weeks or things like that. And I started like thinking further into it. And I said, you know what? I'm going to post authentic things, not tailored to the audience. However, I'm going to make sure it's interesting posts. So now not only the quality of my content has gone up, but the, the, my style has really picked up as well. However, here's the kicker is I if I cannot get through a small amount of likes on my Instagram or three comments on my vlogs, how the hell am I going to be able to go through uh, uh, when I daily vlog? You know, like when my parents see this, when people say you're in real estate, why are you daily vlog? Why is someone following you around like Gary Vaynerchuk and D-Rock? Like, why do you have that? And so the ultimate goal, I'll just tell you right now, the ultimate goal is that I want to build up a following based on a lifestyle, more practical lifestyle. So obviously Gary's all about action and you see it and he says, watch what I do, not what I say. And that's amazing. That's a great concept. However, for me is that I need to learn when someone says, this is why I'm doing something. It's really hard for me to pick up something unless I'm really paying attention. So in other words, like Gary will, until he actually said, I work from this time to this time, because they'll flash the time across the screen. He wakes up at eight o'clock, he goes to bed at 11 or 12 or whatever, and he's working the whole time. However, unless he actually said, I work from eight to 12, I wouldn't actually compute it because they flash it across the screen. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool, it's eight o'clock. Oh, okay, cool, it's midnight. But I wouldn't actually compute, holy shit, that's a long day. All right. Do you know what I'm saying is that he's saying, watch what I do. However, that's really, really hard. You know what it's like? It's like Michael Jordan saying, watch my free throw. And then he shoots a free throw. However, you don't know that he said, watch the position of my feet. Watch where my hands are. They're more around and they're coddling on the outside of the ball instead of the center of the ball. Watch my elbow. It's, it's 90 degrees to my body. In other words, he's explaining the shot instead of just shooting. And I feel like, by the way, that's a brilliant metaphor. I just thought of that right now. That's what Gary does. Gary is more of like, watch me, but he doesn't really break down like about it. I'm the opposite where I need to learn because someone tells me 
this is the right way, wrong way, whatever. And then I'll try it out and I'll see for myself. And now I'm pretty good at 10 years. Uh, yeah, actually 10 years in self-development. Holy cow. And that's insane. That is insane. 10 years. Wow. I didn't think I would be here. That's amazing. I actually just realized that. And I know for you guys, you're like, okay, shut up, Charles. Stop, you know, <laughs> reminiscing. But I can tell you right now, when I was 22, I'll tell you exactly where I was. I was 22. I thought I was cool, but I wasn't. I was, I thought I was confident, but I was deeply insecure. I had, I was dating one of the hottest girls, but I was extremely insecure. She was going to cheat on me. I didn't know how to treat her well, so I started modeling myself around what she liked and what she wanted to do. Um, but you know what she she liked? She liked the real Charles. She liked the authentic Charles. So we broke up probably around July. I was working at the Olive Garden. I was sort of in school at 22, college. You know, I had another semester. I was a total fucking disaster. A total fucking disaster. That is the only way to put it. I was a total fucking disaster, and I picked up one book. The first book was uh, by Susan Jeffers. I can't believe I'm blanking on it. Uh, feel the fear, feel the fear, and do yeah, feel the fear and do it anyway. And then I immediately right after that, I picked up uh, how to win friends and influence people. And I can't believe it's been ten years. I'll just tell you about for all the young guys out there and gals. Uh, two things. Number one is. 10 years went, yeah, you obviously hear it, but like 10 years went really fast, number one. But number two is don't estimate, underestimate what you could do in 10 years. Like I'm thinking about where I was and where my friends are. And to be honest, a lot of them, you know, the people that I grew up with, they're really not going anywhere. They, they're going to be in their job. They're probably the same job, maybe buying nicer things, you know, not exponentially, but, you know, sort of doing the same thing. I'm thinking long term, which goes back to my original. This is a really good podcast because I, I I'm literally getting the chills thinking about what I'm doing, but also that I could piece together in my mind so much better when someone is bullshitting me or trying to sell me something through self development or whatever. Who's authentic? Who's inauthentic? You know who's in it? Like Ty Lopez, like. The, the dude's kind of going off the rails like he's sort of coming back on it with the podcast. I don't I unsubscribed a while ago, you know, uh, Gary's the real deal. Grant needs to go a little bit more practical. Uh, value attainment is is pretty good. But there's really I'm not going to lie, guys, you know, like when I bring on this videographer, I'm I'm really going long term. Like I'm really going to step it up because two things I'm going to take the Gary approach where I'm going to have a main business and oh, by the way, I happen to speak podcast and produce videos. I'm not going to like sell like, yeah, I'll probably sell you guys something in the future, like a fucking book or something, but I'm not like grant where I'm saying buy my product and that and like sell it to you like always like, yeah, I'll have maybe one product a year. But to be honest, I want my business to be content creating. I want to have a real estate business. I want to have a real estate management, a real estate just like everything in real estate re development, just like real estate is where it's at. The financial markets are so hard, and now you have the the bots on the computers, just just uh, supercomputers, just um, trading. What do they call it? Something trading, like uh, hyper trading or speed trading or whatever. And it's so hard to actually beat those co computers because what they do is you send in a trade for a thousand shares, and these computers will pick it up because you sent it through a regular computer, like your Mac or your laptop, and these computers will pick it up, they'll buy it before you, so now you're buying that at a higher price, then you buy it, and then they'll sell it, or they'll buy it at a low price, then your trade comes in at a higher price because they just bought it, and then they'll sell it to you. So in other words, they make that profit, and you're thinking, what, that's, that's a minimal profit of like 50, 60 cents, or you know, a dollar or whatever on say higher, traded stocks. But if you do that thousands, tens of thousands on millions of dollars, tens of thousands of trades or, or thousands of trades a day on millions of dollars, that adds a lot. <laughs> that adds like there is a firm. All right, I won't go into it. But essentially what I'm the point of the podcast was 
you have to put yourself and I'll, I'll give you an example. You have to put yourself in uncomfortable positions for the long term, because I don't know when that phone call is going to come through from Good Morning America, from Ellen, from uh, Fox Business or CNN, CNBC or I don't know, or just like Gary or someone else. And I need to be able to put myself in so many uncomfortable positions of people calling me a, a cunt and a bitch and a, and a shitty American and also have no engagement on my photos. So I, I have a little bit of a skin. So when I go on those shows, I'm not worrying about as much what other people are thinking. I'm more authentic. I am the opposite of what I was when I was dating this girl uh, at 22 that I was talking about before. Like I was molding myself around her. And I feel that so many influencers, once they hit a, a certain point, and you'll see this in music as well, is that they'll, they'll, they'll hit this point where they either don't become or, or their music is not as popular anymore or they – have such a big following that everyone is praising them that they change and then they mold it around what the people want. But then the people are like, hold on, wait, what? Are you a little bit fake? Um, oh, this is nice. <laughs> Someone is delivering a package. We'll just let them in. Um, that's really funny. <laughs> so the reason I'm doing that is for the learn long term. This is what these are the two points to get out of it. You have to put yourself in uncomfortable positions. And what I was talking about before with Tim Ferriss. So you know what Tim Ferriss was talking about? Highly re recommend subscribing to his YouTube channel. He's really picked up his game lately. And the number one thing that he just picked up was that he will go to a random city, put on some sunglasses, put on like an asinine outfit like wings or butter uh, like i forgot what he said he went to like dallas or austin or something like that and he would just put on this ridiculous outfit to stand out to go through the social pressure of not giving a fuck and the biggest thing that i was talking about is if you care about the social pressure of people saying this stupid american this blah 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 like if you care about that then what are you going to do when that true opportunity for a job, for an influencer, for uh, a big gig, like if you're a stand-up comedian, if you're a music, if you're an athlete, or that big game, like wh whatever that that is to you, like what is that? I just want to make sure that is the guy coming up. I don't know. All right. Sorry for interrupting the podcast. But that's what I'm saying is that if you don't put yourself every single – week or at least month on a minimum in an uncomfortable position i can tell you right now that when that big gig game or that pretty girl or that job opportunity or whatever that is to you comes into your life you're not going to be able to seize the moment because you're afraid of what people are going to think what are the producers going to think when i totally screw up on my acting role what is the crowd going to think when i tell a bad joke you know like I guess he's not coming up. Whatever. What are the people going to think when I put out my daily vlog? This is what I'm saying, Charles Botenston. What am I? What are people going to think when I put out my vlog? You know. So number one is put yourself in uncomfortable positions. You and I know I've mentioned this multiple times. I just made videos about it. But long term, you have to have at least some idea of what you like. Okay. So and I'll just give you an example. So this girl is 25. That is are creative right now and she just got really expensive and i don't know if we can hire her anymore like she just started charging like ridiculous amounts and uh, I, I think it was a little silly on her part because she wasn't really thinking long term at all you know i i think i just made a podcast about this and she her long term was like i'm gonna raise my rates because i'm transactional and i just want to make a ton of money but she has to understand the opportunity, not only that we're going to deliver right now, but in the long term is if you like to podcast, if you like to draw, if you like to play games, there is so much opportunity. Like Gary has talked about this, like you cannot complain. There should be no, not only no excuses, there should be no complaints about just like getting your stuff anywhere. Music, you're talented at drawing, animation, editing, filming, video, voiceovers, acting, like any kind of entertainment. 
Then if you want to go on the micro level, which is if you're a good coder, if you're good at designing apps, if you're good at designing websites, like anything, like there should be no excuses at all. Like none, none. You could be in Mumbai, you could be in Shanghai, you could be in Moscow, you could be in the middle of fucking nowhere, just have an internet and a device that connects to it and you produce good content or you produce a good service or product. Like uh, our, our CRM was started in India. They made their first play into the United States last year and now they're picking up so much ground because everyone in the United States is saying all the CRMs, CRM is customer relationship manager, all the CRMs that are out there are shit. They're shit. They're, they're like either uh, computer based or they're too complicated or there's too much going on. There's not a good app. It's not, it's not internet based. It's more computer based. In other words, you have to be, in other words, you can't log in from any computer. So I'm just going to leave this podcast off right now is there's three areas you need to focus on is number one is putting yourself in social in uncomfortable social positions, whether that's approaching someone that you see at a networking event, posting a photo, posting a video, saying how you truly feel about a subject. I would avoid religion and politics, but you could dabble in that. That's completely up to you. And literally sit in the controversy or sit in the the pushback or the feedback or whatever you get from it. Because I'm telling you right now, that is not a big idea or not a big deal compared to what's going to happen when you get your big break. When that phone call comes in and says, hey, listen, we're going to go live in front of millions of people tomorrow. So I hope this finds you well. I hope you guys literally find yourself going to doing, going to doing, going to do uncomfortable things. I'll just throw out a couple of things, improv, stand up. Um, you know, approaching pretty girls, asking that guy out, you know, talking to someone at the gym, not even hitting on them, but just like talking to them at the gym or talking to even the, the person behind the register when you're getting coffee or breakfast or food or whatever, talking to the waiter, talking to the bartender, whatever the case is, like just talking, <laughs> just talking to people. So hope you guys have an awesome day. I'm going to sign off right now. And if you have any questions, just leave in the comments below. Talk to you guys soon. Have an awesome day.